seats. Go ahead and take your seats. We're going to start a brand new series. Yeah. You know the title of this series, uh, I had another title for this series. But this morning about 3.30, I opened my eyes and the Lord gave me this title. And the title is Still Standing. <laughs> oh, I know a lot of you can relate to the title. I could just, I could just leave the building right now. I know you've been in situations and that, that people done wrote you off, and but but you, 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 you're still standing. Got some war wounds, but still standing. <laughs> So we're going to have fun with this series. Yeah. Good morning to those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll never take you for granted. And for those of you that got out of your bed, took the drive to come in the building, we love you. Thank you so much. Uh, the building feels much better when there are people in it. You know, uh, we, we do have our... Uh, mad saying that we survived an empty church during COVID. But it's so good to see people starting to make their way back into the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. So you got your Bible. Let's go ahead and get started, man. Let's hold your Bibles up. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer, not just to hear. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing comes by the word of God. Your faith is developed based on what you lend your ears to. I could tell you what you listen to the most if I just watch what you say and watch what you do. Your body will follow the direction of your words. So be careful what you speak. Have you ever been to a sporting event or watched one on television? And it looks like the game is over. You know, I remember watching sporting events, and, and, and it just looked like, I'm talking about seconds left on the clock. And, and, and the stand, the people start leaving out. They done counted the team out. They, done, they, they, they get up, and they begin to leave the stand. And then in the last moment, something happened. <laughs> there was a touchdown that was caught in the last second that determined the game. There was a jump shot taken in the last second of the game. There was a knockout in the last, I've been losing the whole fight, but in the last round there was a punch thrown and somebody got knocked out and the people had walked out of the building. They had begun to exit stating based on their actions that I believe you have lost. Sometimes in your life, my life, it's the same way. Sometime before the fight is over, people have decided that you have lost the battle. So if you would, grab your Bibles, open your Bibles this morning. I'm going to read Ephesians, the sixth chapter, 13th verse. I was going to read down from 13 down to 18, but right here at verse 13, the sixth chapter, verse 13 from Ephesians, I think this will get me started. And the word of God reads, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And then the following verse says, stand. <laughs> See, first of all, you got to be suited up for the fight. 
Many times we go out trying to fight spiritual battles dressed in natural armor. In order for you to win, you will have to make sure that you suit up for the fight. Part of the armor is what the Bible calls the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Yeah, that, that, that means that you need to be born again. Yeah, put on the, hel put on the helmet of salvation. <laughs> oh, Jesus, thank you. And take the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So here it is, the Bible says, okay, become, a, become born again. Put on the helmet of salvation and then take the sword of the Spirit, meaning take the Bible, learn how to use the Bible like a gladiator uses a sword. Learn how to fight the battle. See, too many times you're trying to fight battles using the wrong tools, and you get frustrated. But then I, I remember fighting battles and losing battles when I was trying to fight it in my own strength. But then one day I walked into a church in Stuttgart, Germany, and all of a sudden something happened. All of a sudden, I didn't know the Bible. I just knew the Bible on the 23rd Psalm, sitting on a coffee table with dust on it, or sitting in the, 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 the back window of a car where the sun done cut, made it turn yellow. I, I didn't know nothing about what the Bible said. So I couldn't use what I didn't know. But then I walked into this church, and, and all of a sudden, somebody started teaching. And, and, and then a few times, I, I, you know, I kind of just I sat at the edge of my seat. I knew they were talking to me, but that seemed like 2,000 miles to go from that seat to that altar. And I just I had to build my courage. I had to build it up. I had to, if you all want, you can bring me another mic. I know this one is going out. Uh, but I, I had to make sure I had to say, man. I, I, they're talking about me. So after a few times, I eased up a little farther at the edge of my seat. And then one day I got up and I went. I, I went up there. I'm talking about shaking like the scarecrow coming off that pole if you watch the Wizard of Oz. I'm, I'm talking about things just come. But I'm trying to get there because I know I need help. I don't know about you, but I know that I need help. So, so I finally I made my way. Thank you, guys. Finally, I made my way up to the altar, and I gave my life to Jesus. I put on the helmet of salvation. And then many people didn't know, but I, I really couldn't read that well when I started my Christian walk. So I would go to Bible, Bible study. And, you know, they, 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 church people are funny people because you don't ask new people to read. You don't know if I could read or not. So, you know, we're sitting around the table. I had on those $400 gazelles. For those of you that's old school, you know, those were the, I'm talking about, that was the cream of the crop back then. So I had my gazelles on, had my gold on. So I'm looking like I'm looking. And them people, the circle came around. And once again, I'm shaking like the scarecrow because I know, oh, Jesus, if you're real, you need to come right now. You need to show up right now. So I, it took me forever to read a little small paragraph. I felt like they gave me a whole book to read. And, and I, 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 but I, I toughed it out. And then I, I went and I, I, they, they met up at the church at lunchtime to pray. Well, I didn't, go, I didn't show up to pray. I showed up to be prayed for. So they're in a circle. And then all of a sudden, they, they, I noticed everybody holding hands around the circle. After having done all the stand, stand, I'm, trying, I'm taking you somewhere. So here it is, they, they, they hold hands and this one pray. And then I realized that the one person is not going to do all the praying. So that one prayed and then the other person prayed. And then the other person prayed. And then it got to me. I don't even know the Lord's Prayer. So what I did was I knew one church song. And that was come by here, my Lord. So I started singing from my soul. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Somebody needs you, Lord. Come by here. So here it is. I'm praying. I'm about to faint. I'm telling. It's bad in this place. It's bad because you don't. 
tell me to do, I, I don't do this. I came because I know I need prayer. I didn't, my prayer probably wouldn't have made it to God anyway at that time. So you, what you going to have me to pray for? So here I, I start singing, and I'm singing. And, and, and then not only am I in that situation, I married Mother Teresa. So if something ever jumped off in the house, I want to use my street wit to win the battle. Mother Teresa don't fight fair. She say, and the Bible says, oh, Jesus, I don't know. You could be lying. I don't know what the Bible says. And there were times when I first got started, I didn't know the Lord. But because I was determined to get to know him, I was determined not to be that guy that, that was afraid to pray and afraid to read and have a smart wife to know the Bible so I don't know if she's quoting the Bible right or not. I said, I got to catch up. But in the process of starting, starting to run this race, there were many times while I was trying to find my footing where I would get knocked down. There were many times because I didn't know the power that was in the Word of God. I didn't know that, that the Word of God was designed to change my life. I was, as a Christian, still trying to fight the battles the way I had always fought them. And, and, but God loved me so much. He loved me so much to where even when the devil thought he had me. Have you ever seen one of those old Western movies where two people be out there fighting in the streets and all of a sudden the dust just comes up? You can't, it's so dusty you can't even see the two people that's fighting. But eventually, when the fight is over, the dust settles. There were some people, I'm sure, standing around watching the fight, watching the battles that Leo was in. I'm sure they were thinking that because it got real dusty, there was a rumble, and the dust did not allow them to see whether or not Leo was winning or losing. So some of them thought they knew what was going to be the outcome. They got up and they walked out of the stadium. They thought I had lost. But when the dust settled, God had his boy standing still. When the dust settled, you've been in some of those fights yourself. You've been in fights where how there's no way. It's the last moment. It's the last second. How can I pull this off? Well, I've partnered with the word of God. I use the word of God like a gladiator uses his sword. And because I do, I do that, you cannot lose with the word of God. So have you ever wanted to shout? I'm still standing. Look at somebody and say, still standing. Still, yeah, I done been through some stuff. Yeah, I done been through some stuff. If we look at Daniel, I think the, 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 the Hebrew boys, I think they are a great example of still standing. Daniel, the third chapter, starting at the 12th verse. It reads, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and I heard one preacher say a bad Negro. I... Yeah, y'all pray for me. Pray for me. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the, God, the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the god, the gold image which I have set up? Now if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn. Flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony, with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, 
you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar getting a little bit beside himself. He, first of all, they set him up. Because here it is, they, hey, hey, you got three people in the, in the province. You got three people in Jacksonville. They refuse to bow. They, where well, everybody else is, when the music started playing, everybody else is bowed down. They're standing up, looking around. When the gold calf come by, they're praising the gold calf, everybody but these three. And then they say they don't really care what you think. <laughs> so all of a sudden, here it is. The king, he gets upset. Too many times you can't win because you're bowing. You fall under the, you, cr you are crushed under the pressure of thinking that God is not a God enough to see you through. But you've got to position yourself so that no matter what happens, you always will come on the other side still standing. See, there have been sickness trying to, I'm talking about just take over your body. And some years ago, somebody told you that you only have a moment, you only have a little while to live, but look at you now, you are still standing. You thought when they foreclosed on your house, see, well, you may not have ever had a house foreclosed on. I, so maybe I'll just tell my story. It looked like some years ago when Pastor Norman and I, we were just really getting married and I had gotten out the military and man had wasted a lot of money and all of a sudden life happened. We had bought this house in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I was running around looking for jobs. And I, and I thought I had me a couple. There was one time uh, I was meeting with this guy to work at Fox Network, and he had called me in, and I had favor with him. He said, Leo, I'm going to give you a company car, and I'm going to I'm gonna give you a company card, and I want you to just take people out, and I want you to sell advertisement. He said, I got you. He said, come back in two weeks. So I'm, I'm excited, you know, because I could tell my wife, I say, girl, I got the job. Ooh, I got the job. I'm talking, they give me a company car. You're talking about a brother who barely could read a company car, and I got a, a credit card with their name on it, and they give me permission to go to not Crystal, but to go to some of the big places. I say, oh, look at this. So I go back on the day that the man told me, and I walk in the office, and I say, hey, I'm Leo reporting for duty. They say, you who? I say, I'm Leo. And I called him. I said, Mr. So-and-so and so told me today is the day that I report to work. And the person that I talked to say, um, uh, I'm sorry to tell you that he no longer works here. And we don't know nothing about you. Oh, God. So now I got to go home and walk the, the, the death mile. <laughs> Baby, I just went down there and, 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 and. They say they don't know me, and the fellow that hired me, he don't work there, so he done hired me, he done got fired. I, so, so then I, I take in, but I'm still standing. Yeah, I'm still standing. With tears in my eyes, I'm still standing. Because by this time, I think the house is in trouble. Yeah, I think the house is in trouble. So I, next thing I do, I, I, I keep looking. and So now I go meet with another guy. He had a home where he needed a counselor. And, and he wanted everybody with degrees, but when he sat down and talked to me, he said, man, I like you. And, and so he said, look, Leo, you got your job. He said, report back on this day. So I go home and I, oh, girl, it didn't happen again. Glory to God, I got me a job. So I go back and knock on the door on the day he told me. He sent his wife to the door and said, tell Leo that the government disapproved the funding for the program, so I got to go home again. I walk in the house and I say, girl, you ain't going to believe it, but this happened. So then I get me another job, a buddy of mine. 
He drove vehicles. I'm taking you somewhere because I'm still standing through it all. I'm a little weak, but I'm still standing. And, and then a buddy of mine, he used to transport military people that were going in the military from Fayetteville to Charlotte. So he said, Leo, you can come on there. You can, I got a position for you. It wasn't his company. It was somebody else's company. But he, so every day I'm riding. We riding, taking new military people down to the MEP station. And then after about, I think maybe about a month, I had to ask about some money. I said, you know. I said, I'm, you know, hey, hey, you know. He said, Leo, they didn't send you a check. I said, oh, no, not nothing. I said, I mean nothing. Then so we called a company. And then that company said, we never told you to hire Leo. Help me, Jesus. So, so, so I got to go home again. And this is after I done worked. So now I'm still standing, but I felt Mixontown rise up. You know, so now I got to calm myself down because I'm a Christian in a dilemma. Because you don't work me like a Hebrew slave and I don't get nothing out the deal. So I, I, go, I go home and, and I tell my wife, I say, I say she, don't, she don't watch me get up happy every day because I love to work. I go to work. I come home and tell my wife, I say, girl, you ain't going to believe it. I said, the people told me that they never gave the person permission to hire me. By now, it's real bad, but I'm still, st still standing. And, and then I, 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 I take in, I'm hiding my car now. Don't you judge me. I know, I know some of you ain't never had to hide nothing. I'm telling you my story. So, so when you see what God has done in my life, you won't be hating on me. So, so here it is. I, I, we're hiding, the, we're, we're hiding the, 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 the cars, and then we took in, I got to call these people on the house for two years, a little less than two years. We stayed in a house that we couldn't make a payment on, and the people could not take it. Even though things were happening, and every time I call them, one of the ladies say, Mr. Leo, I've been doing this for 20 years. She said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This wasn't doing COVID. This was during a time when you didn't stay in houses for long, for long periods of time when it's in foreclosure. She said, Mr. Leo, what they did, they took and they transferred. They don't transfer your file around. It's like every time the file get ready to go into foreclosure, it moves and, and, and it gets lost in the shuffle. It, so finally, finally, we, Pastor Norm and I, we decided, my mom had gotten sick, so we decided we was going to move back here. I called the people. I said, hey, you could come get your house. So before we left, because we're still standing, and it wasn't their fault that I couldn't uphold my end of the deal. I'm trying to teach you something. So even though the house was a foreclosure, we went through, took the little money we had. We went and got a carpet cleaner. We went and got oven cleaner. We went and got air fresheners. And I cleaned that house, the two of us rather, cleaned that house from top to bottom. And we had put garage door openers in there. We took it in front of whoever the next family would be. We put them on the kitchen counter as a blessing. And when the lady came to get the house back, she said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Why? Because we still stand. And see, just because life had happened, I still had to operate like I was God's son. And then the military had a thing to wear. Because, see, we couldn't afford to move from North Carolina to Jacksonville. We got a phone call from a friend of mine, and his wife said, Leo, you do know that if this time hasn't expired, the military still will move you. We were, I think, maybe about a month or a few weeks from the expiration time to where we would have had to figure it out. But God was setting it up, setting it up. We're still standing. I took and I walked around, and I had 
I had, I, I used to wear do rags. You know, I know my hair a little thin now, but I used to have enough ways to make you see sick. But, but you know, so, so, so here it is. I had my do rags, and but, but there was a dilemma because I didn't have a lot of clothes, and my pants were split. All this was wore out in my pants. So I had to take my do rag and some hemming tape and I had to patch my britches. My shoes had holes in them. I took cardboard and I put them in my shoes. But I was still standing. People talked about us. It's amazing how people will flee away from you during the most crucial times of your life. But I remember sitting in the house, the first house. <laughs> I remember sitting on the stairs in the house after we had cleaned it. And I remember holding a conversation with God. I said, Jesus, I can handle it. I can get another house. But if I woke up and I knew you had abandoned me, I couldn't take it. As long as I know that you're there, I can stand losing the house. I could stand people talking about me. I could stand having cardboard in my shoes. I could stand him in my pants with a do-rag. I could stand walking down the street some days with tears in my eyes, I can take it as long as I know that you're there. Yeah, I can take it. I'm still standing. I'm talking about there were times when there were no food. My wife took leg quarters. I think they were about 12 or $13 a case, and she'd cook them and and and. and, and We'd act like God had given us the best meal on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, I had people talking about us. Oh, God, it was awful. It was awful. And the crazy thing about it was, the person that you know right now, I've always been him. I've always been loyal. I've always loved people. People knew me based on how I loved and treated people. So when the bottom fell out, as a Christian, I could not understand how you could do me like this. Because some of you I had given my money to. And it had gotten so bad to where I had gotten so weak at one time to where the Lord showed me a vision of me and I was in the fetal position and Finally, it's like heaven said, enough is enough. And God had showed me where he had put a canopy over me to where when the devil was taking shots at me, he could no longer touch me. Yeah, you need to know. This thing costs. No, I wasn't a pastor. I was just a Christian who loved God. And then we bought another house. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And the bottom fell out. And I pulled up to the house one day, and they, I never understood why the foreclosure sign had to be so big. I pulled up when the lady pulled up. And then all of a sudden, she pulled this big sign up. And I'm talking like it covered the whole front of my, I know it didn't, but it just seemed like it was just a big banner that covered the whole face of my house. And I walked up there and I grabbed hold to it. And I began to minister to myself. Why? Because, see, I knew that the situation that I found myself in, I knew that wasn't the end. See, and, and one might question, why do he talk about Pastor Norma like he do? Why? He, child, that's my foxhole buddy. As a wife, if you'd have been through some of the stuff that Pastor Norman went through, being married to Pastor Leo, and you stood, you stood, stayed there with him, you, oh, really? After the first house, I would have left him. 
Yeah, yeah, because if there was a way for me to leave me, I would have said, hey, bro, I'm tired, I'm tired. You, you know, because some of this stuff now, understand, some of the stuff that was happening was not the devil. Oh. It was Pastor Leo. It was being married to a dreamer that did not calculate the cost of making decisions. So I jump, then I want to make the decision. That's why now it's calculated. Yeah, I don't care what kind of idea you have. Uh, Pastor Norman, what you think? And first of all, Jesus, what you think? Pastor Norman, do you agree with this? If we don't agree with it together, we just don't do it. There is safety in a multitude of counsel. I had counsel, but I ignored it. Yeah, yeah, still standing. Still standing. And then and, and, and talking about taking tests. Before Jesus, I don't believe I ever passed a test. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't, I don't believe I passed one. Uh, even the military test, I scored. When I first went to the military, I, my, my score only qualified me for two jobs. Yeah, that was infantry or artillery. And I remember seeing the picture on the wall. And the people that the job that I took, the people on the picture looked miserable. But since I didn't have a lot of choices, I do solemnly swear to protect and defend the Constitution. Yeah. But now if we roll it just forward some. Because I took the time to learn who I am in Jesus. Because I understood that I don't have to be on this roller coaster ride of up and down, up and down. No, I can stabilize it by using the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Why am I telling you my business? Some of you are there right now. You don't have to go through as long of a season as I did to learn the lesson. Trust the word of God now. Because some people can't say they're still standing. And I just gave you a fraction of what we went through. But the word of God says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Because when this thing dropped in, because see, really, I'm a private person, really. So there are some things that I had decided, I, I just, you know, even though some of the stuff I mentioned today, you've heard, some of you have heard, but there are some things in my life I decided a long time ago that I would never talk about publicly. But I realize now God is shifting some things. Because he's, he, you can cause more harm than good when you don't paint the right picture. It's not always peaches and cream. Life hasn't always smiled on us. And sometimes when I look back, I know the only reason I was still standing was because it was Jesus holding me. I was so exhausted at one time. Oh, Jesus. Just trying to figure out because see, you have to understand, some people have testimonies to where they've done good and they've been successful all of their lives. My testimony was totally the opposite. I was not a high achiever. I didn't like myself. I didn't feel loved. I was abandoned as a child. As a little boy, I was told that I was left on somebody's doorstep, meaning that I wasn't loved by my parents. I remember my father telling me that I had gotten so sick as a little boy to where I had asthma real bad, and he told me, said that he took me, and he used to, he didn't have a car, and he would run down the highway trying to get me to the doctor so that I would live. I remember going to school and 
sometimes not having all that I needed. And the young man that you see in here, when he comes back, he's working now, uh, Vern. Vern and I were boy friends, you know, from a boy age. And he used to give me some of his school clothes to go to school in because I didn't have clothes. But I'm still standing and the reason why I was still standing is because all of my life, when it didn't look like it was going to be okay, God was moving. He was working the chess on the board in my favor. Out of 12 children, I was the only child out of 12 that was raised outside of our family. And that bothered me. But I found out later that it was a plan that God had because most of my family members, those that are alive and those that have gone on to be with the Lord, my wife and I led them to Jesus. <laughs> Still standing. I know I didn't give you a lot of scriptures today, but I wasn't supposed to. I just... Sometimes you need to hear because if, if, if you come into my personal space and Pastor Normal's personal space right now, there's no residue of where we come from. So if you don't know our past, you will think that it's always been like this. You will think that, man, they don't understand. I'm still amazed at what God did. I'm, I'm still amazed that you go from not being able to learn and now you're a college graduate. I'm still. I'm still amazed at not knowing where Genesis was in the Bible and now if I tally up, I probably have about four, three, four, five years of Bible school training. Still amazed. I'm still amazed that one time we didn't have any food and now we have a refrigerator and two freezers. I'm still amazed. When my wife needs something, I tell her I'm going to the store, but what I've done is I created and abundance in our garage, so I have shelves in there. So when you need something, I have to tell them to run to the store. But really, I'm going to the garage. Why, why, why is that important? Because she deserves it. Yeah, she deserves it. And this ain't bragging on this. I'm just, I done told you my business. I'm just being clear that if you keep standing, Don't allow the devil to determine the outcome of your story. God has not changed his mind concerning you. He still has a plan. Your responsibility is. Keep standing. Give the Lord a hand, praise. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, You notice when we started off this lesson, the Bible said that in order to be battle ready, you have to put on the helmet of salvation. Some of you that have heard a part of my and Pastor Norma's story, you, you're thinking, man, how do you overcome those obstacles? Well, I believe the only reason the outcome was the way that it is is because we trust Jesus. We made Jesus the Lord of our life. And for those of you that haven't made Jesus Lord of your life, this is your day. I believe that the very reason why God would have me to share part of our story with you, I believe that it's so that you know that you don't have to 
be a person that cross your T's and dot your I's in order to qualify. You don't have to be a person that have done everything right. God is saying, hey, come as you are. Bring all your failures. Bring all of your disappointments. Bring all the bad things that you may have done. He said, bring that to me. So if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is your day. So if you would, please repeat after me. Don't you dare disqualify yourself. Somebody's watching on Facebook. Don't you dare disqualify yourself. God knew you were going to do what you were going to do before you did it. He made a way of escape before you committed the act. So if you would, repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for loving me. Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the price for me. And I choose this day to give you my life. So I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead. So thank you for paying the price for me. And then there's another group of you out there. You did make Jesus Lord of your life, but you know you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you should. It's because you haven't really picked up the sword of the spear. You haven't spent time studying the word of God and understanding your rightful place in him. And because of that, you haven't been living the way that you should. So what I want you to do, this is a great day for you to repent. And repentance simply means to turn and go in a different direction. Stop doing the things that you know is wrong and go in a whole nother different uh, direction knowing that you're going to be making better decisions. So if you would, please repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I choose this day to repent of my sins. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand praise. Hallelujah. For those of you that gave your life to the Lord for the very first time, or if you rededicated your life, we have a little gift for you. And the little gift is a little pamphlet that says, yes, that's for those of you that are in the building or those of you that are viewing Facebook and YouTube. We would love to get one of these in your hand. For those of you that are viewing on Facebook and YouTube, there should have been a block to pop up on your screen, and it's, gonna, it's asking you a question uh, based on the decision that you just made. Please click on there if you made a decision for the Lord Jesus today. I'm telling you that the best days of your life is out in front of you. We love you. Until next week, have an amazing week. Let somebody know that Jesus loved them. And we will see you next week.